Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and a big, warm, international welcome to this week's weekend programme. We hope you are well and more than coping with the disruption to what used to be called normal life nowadays. Are you adapting? Are you fighting it? Or have you just plain given up? You know, trite as it may sometimes sound in certain circumstances, God really does love you. And Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the living proof of that fact. Now, Stuart and I have had to, we've had loads of queries from people looking for advice on how to deal with the challenges. For example, should you take the jab? What about the booster? What about food shortages, which are worse in some places than others? Or the fuel shortages where petrol or gas stations are running out of fuel because there's just not enough truck drivers to deliver? What about small businesses? They're trying to recover from the effects of lockdown and now they're finding a shortage of good staff. What about the arrests and the riots that are happening all over the world as people groups, ethnos, rise against others? Well, the good news is that this is exactly what we've been discussing for a very long time. You know, it's laid out clearly in prophecy by the Lord and his sheep know and hear his voice and obey him. Now, over the years, I've done a number of tours and conferences with our Bethel Communications Ministry advising of how to look out for the signs, what they are, how to prepare for what's coming, both on a practical and a spiritual level. And if you do want to know more, then please write to us here, telling us a wee bit about yourself, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So just send an email to info at globalvision.tv. Because remember, the Lord is an ever-present help in times of trouble. He's our refuge and our strength, as Psalm 46 says. And he's not the one who seeks to catch you unawares. So let's go over to the discussion panel as we discuss yet another increasing challenge to the church known as the NAR. Hello and welcome to this week's discussion panel. Uh, Before we pray, let's just introduce ourselves. We have... Uh, Steve Lloyd here. I'm a pastor of a small church and the secretary of the Bible Prophecy Foundation. Good to be back. Great to have you. Uh, Pastor Anton Bosch. Hi, my name is Anton and um, I lead a church in uh, the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, California. The the home of the fruits and the nuts, I do believe. Let's move on swiftly to Brother Gideon Levitam. Yes, shalom. I'm Gideon Levitam. Happy to be with you on this panel. Lovely to have you, Gideon. And Stuart Mendeloz. Hello, I'm Stuart. I'm a servant of the Lord and I serve a small church here in uh, Fife in Scotland. And uh, great to be here again. Lovely to see you, Stuart. And Marjorie, (laughs) dear sister Marjorie. Yes, hello, it's Marjorie again. It's wonderful to be on this panel. It's been so interesting to hear everybody's ideas. We can have our own ideas, but I praise God to get the cross-pollination of ideas that happens here. It's wonderful. Praise God. Thank you for being with us, Marjorie. Let's just open in prayer. Thank you. Father, once again, we thank you for this time and uh, the fact that we can come together in this way. And we ask, oh Lord, that uh, what we do here today would be a blessing and uh, would help people in their uh, studying and in their thoughts. But Lord, we want to give you the glory. We thank you for who you are and all that you are to us. So bless us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our discussion panel is looking at many of the different deceptions and movements uh, and warnings so that we can explain to you what they are, uh, how to identify them, and most importantly, how to avoid them, how to keep yourself walking right with the Lord. And this week, we're looking at what's known as the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation. And it's a phrase that's getting bandied about, and very few people really understand what it's about. And it is extremely insidious because it bases itself on scripture with a big twist. Um, A few weeks ago, we looked at dominionism. We looked at um, kingdom now theology and taking the world for Jesus by putting Christians into all areas of society from the media to politics and beyond. Now, the NAR shares many of these ideas and it's based on post-millennial restoration 
we'll explain that a bit more fully in a couple of minutes. Now, apparently there's almost 70 million people who've been exposed to the movement. Now, it started by the late C. Peter Wagner, who has the title of, well, he's, he has actually passed away. Um, now, let me let me tell you what his some of his titles were. He was the presiding apostle of the International Coalition of Apostles, as well as the founding apostle of Eagle's Vision Apostolic Team. So we have a clue that apostles um, are involved with this. It's what Wag Wagner called the second apostolic age, and it, it, it coined the name New Apostolic Reformation as the new wineskin, apparently, that God has provided for this new reformation in a radical change in the way we do church. And last week we looked at purpose-driven. This is purpose-driven on steroids. He claims that God brought intercessors and prophets back in vogue to pave the way for the new apostles with intercessors standing in the gap to open the communication between heaven and earth. So we're moving into the areas of the occult here. He says that the prophets are the most specifically, and I'm quoting his own words, they're the most specifically designated individuals to hear God's voice and it is their role to receive and make known the divine messages directed to God's people. But most prophets, he says, will admit to themselves that they have little idea of what to do with most of the words they receive. It is the apostles working hand in hand with the prophets who have the task of setting an order and implementing what God wants done on earth in a certain season. Now, C. Peter Wagner says that these apostles are chosen by God himself, and he uses expressions like they have exceptional authority. They have a spiritual gift of apostle. OK, we can discuss that from the scriptures. And part of that is strong influence that they have an assignment or call that frees them to move in authority. And it is interesting because our dear pastors um, on the panel here, many a time they refer to themselves as servants, as, as those who serve in their churches. But these people have what's called extraordinary character. They are blameless and sinless. Now, they do admit that there is such a thing as sin, but they keep themselves right with God. And if they should sin, they, they deal with it quickly, as should we all. But they're blameless and sinless as possible, with no doubt that holiness of character generates authority. People willingly submit to them. Wagner uses the phrase, no followers, no apostle. And fifth of all, they have vision. With their prophets receiving revelation from God, they're able to say, this is what the Spirit is saying to the churches right now, which is very reminiscent of the book of Revelation and what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say. I'm going to run through very quickly his 12 ministries that, according to him, the apostles have, because it's important. They receive revelation, they cast a vision, they birth, they start new things. They impart, which means they activate God's blessings on others. They build, they govern, they teach, they send, they finish, they war. They're generals in the army of God. And this is where the renowned Cindy Jacobs comes in, intercessors. They align generations, raising up leaders of the future, and they equip. So the prophets and the apostles are those who have authority in the church. So, first of all, Stuart, what do you have to open up with for us this week? There's a great quote, I think we've mentioned it before. To be uninformed is to be at someone else's mercy. Uh, 1 Peter 1.22 states, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply, from the heart. So, and we understand particularly from John's first letter that where there is no love, there is no God. And while we read in Ephesians uh, 4.11, where it says God has given us uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, 
we nevertheless are required to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12. Thank you. Anton, what do you have to say? What is an apostle and what is a prophet? Well, you know, obviously we don't have the time to deal with that in detail um, today. Uh, the, the fact is that what these guys claim to be, uh, they are not. Um, uh, let me just say as a caveat that I'm a continuationist. I don't know that everybody on the panel necessarily is. That's not the point. Um, uh, first of all, the, the ministries, from my perspective, never, never ceased. So the idea of them being restored in these latter days is absolute nonsense. I believe there always have been apostles. There always have been prophets. Um, and um, the, the scripture that, um, that Stuart just quoted, um, uh, that these ministries are given until we come to the fullness of Christ. Um, but be that as it may, uh, the fact is that what they claim to be an apostle is, has no relationship to what an apostle is in the New Testament. Um, and the same as far as a, a prophet is concerned. Um, I, I think the simple thing is that for, 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 for folk who, who are not sure, is this a real prophet or a real apostle, uh, the, the test is simply if they claim to be either, then they, they're, they're not. Um, that, that's all there is to it. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the idea um, of apostles continuing to receive revelation, um, which is one of the cornerstones and prophets, um, denies the very um, sufficiency of Scripture. Um, Hebrews chapter 1, that God in the Old Testament spoke through, uh, through, through the, to the fathers in various ways. In these last days, he has spoken. In the King James, he has spoken. God has done speaking. Uh, there is no new revelation. Jude uh, says that we earnestly contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. There is no new revelation. We have illumination. The Spirit opens the Scriptures to us. But anything in addition to the Scriptures is, is heresy and, um, and, and is, uh, must be rejected. Yes, to add to that, or to go along with what Brother Anton mentioned, is uh, the apostles that the Scripture present before us were really part of the foundation of the church. Not at the end of the church, but at the beginning of the church, Ephesians teaches us this, chapter 2 and verse 20, that you are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The apostles were unique individuals who were selected by the Lord himself when he was here upon the face of this earth. If you remember, he chose in 12 apostles, they walk with him, they saw him, and of course Judas, Yehuda in Hebrew, was not those part of these apostles. He, of course, uh, sold the Lord, and then Matthias replaced him, and from there on, these apostles were foundation of the church, and the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, being the chief cornerstone. So to say that this one today is an apostle, is really, especially at the last days of the church, because we live in the Laodicean days, uh, this is really, as far as I understand from Scripture, unbiblical, and it's really not found there. There are gifted men that God had given uh, to the assemblies and to the, to the church to, uh, to continue on, to teach the Word, but the Word of God that we have in our hands, written by the early apostles, is that which was given to us by the Lord, and we cannot add anything anymore. So I really think it is a very dangerous thing for anyone to claim today to be an apostle, because an apostle, according to the scripture, is one that has seen the Lord, the risen Lord, as we have it in Acts chapter 1, the qualification of an apostle. This is very important. So to say today that, uh, that God is going to uh, raise new apostles, it's not found in the word of God. We have God who raised godly men and taught them by the Spirit of God to teach what we have today already recorded for us by the early apostles in the word of God. Thank you, Gideon. And every word you say is true. 
just about because we might just have another opinion. Anton, would you like to pick up on that? We, I think we all acknowledge that apostles were those who had met and seen the Lord Jesus Christ, and that includes Paul, who met him, um, obviously, um, in very special circumstances. Some believe, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not talking about those who are involved in the NAR, that there could still be apostles today, but we would need a good definition of that. Anton, what do you think? Yeah, it becomes quite technical. Um, but my understanding and what I see in Scripture is that there are different classes of apostles. Um, and, and this is a concept which uh, I freely admit is unique. Um, and when I mean different classes of apostles, very quickly, the, the Lord Jesus is the apostle um, uh, and high priest of our faith. So he was an apostle, but he was unique. There was no one else like him. Uh, the 12 were unique. They had a different function. Um, and then you have Paul, and I don't believe Paul to be uh, one of the 12, um, but he is unique. He is different to the other 12. And, and these have specific uh, callings and specific functions, um, as uh, Brother Gideon has said, in the foundation of the church and the, and the formation of Scripture. Um, but also in the New Testament, we see a number of other men who are also called apostles. Um, but they are not like the Twelve. They are not like Paul uh, and certainly not like Jesus. Um, th their function is similar in the sense that they are sent out, but they are sent by the church rather than by the Lord Jesus himself. And, um, and, and, to, and today we, we just call them missionaries. Um, yes. the, the function is for them to go out, preach the gospel, establish local assemblies, and to move on. Um, apostles Amen. do not preside over denominations or Amen. large groups of churches. They establish local assemblies with local elders, and then they move on to the next area, and they, they do the same there. And so today we've just changed the language. We just call them missionaries today. That is right. what I understand to be a true apostle. Thank you, because, yes, I'm afraid we have to go back to the Greek here, apostolos, one who is sent out, one who is sent off, an emissary, a missionary. Um, Gideon, what would you like to add to that? So we, we, we need to be clear. So we must distinguish the 12 plus the apostle Paul, Shaul Paul, that the Lord, he saw the glorified Messiah, and of course, application to the Lord himself, who is called uh, as well as an apostle. But apostolos, in Hebrew, shaliach, it's anyone that is sent. And we are all, then we can say, all believers are sent. Therefore, all believers are apostles. But we must distinguish these particular apostles that are given to us in the Word of God, such as the 12 plus the Apostle Paul, and, this, and specifically uh, the Lord who is called Yeshua, Jesus called an apostle. So we, we are in agreement on that. But what the NAR is saying today, that you have these specific so-called new apostles of the last days, that they are in a sense similar to the first apostle that we're seeing below, that's what we need to distinguish. It is clear from the Greek and from the Hebrew that shaliach, apostolos, is one that is sent. So all believers are sent. But we must make sure that we distinguish all sent one from the ones that the Lord have called specifically to be the foundation of the assembly. And the thing is that they really put the accent, the NAR really put the accent on authority that these apostles and prophets are ruling in these churches. Um, and again, this hints right back to when we spoke of the heavy shepherding movement, for example. They have all authority. They are very specially picked by God. And again, we're back to this, this almost blameless thing, this holiness thing, which is something that we all ought to be aiming for, every one of us. But it's definitely a two-tier system. In fact, it's almost three-tier because right at the top, according to them, is the apostles and just slightly under them, the prophets. And then there's everybody else. This is not biblical. So what, what's the prescription, doctors, this week? How do we combat this? I'd like a quick word here to have a clear understanding, again, because I love to go to the roots of things, as you heard last week. And so the latter rain movement was before this, and this was highly influenced by William Branham. And William Branham himself was very involved in the occult. And if you can see the occultic root of this thing, 
And I can go into William Branham and all these funny things. He believed the Zodiac and he believed the pyramids were equal to the Bible. He was buried underneath a pyramid. And uh, he had all kinds of strange doctrines. But we can see the occultic root. And the occultic root is a dominating root. And so there, you know, occultism dominates people. Satan dominates people. Now, it is dressed up in, in Christian language because people have forgotten to look back far enough to the origin of it, which came out of William Branham. And he, we see, you know, that he, he was... He was hugely heretical. He denied the Trinity. He, uh, he, he, he was all sorts of strange things. But at the end of the day, what's lying at the root of the NAR is bad theology, twisted scriptures, and personal pride. And those are the things that Branham suffered with. That was a description of him. He twisted the scripture. He actually had bad theology. And it was personal pride. And you can see the personal pride reigning in these leaders in the NAR who term themselves apostles and prophets. And uh, I just wanted to put it in there quickly that we see the result is an occultic movement controlling people in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. Very good. And of course, C. Peter Wagner was most closely associated prior to this with the whole the whole territorial spirits thing and um you know praying and oh my goodness it's embarrassing to remember I remember decades ago we'd walk around parts of the town and would be binding spirits in this place and that place and it didn't take too long to realize this is just not biblical. So th there is a, a strong occult route. And though these programs are short, these discussion panels on the on the weekend program, we will be doing longer, more in-depth ones for the Spiritual Deception Channel, which I think off the top of my head is Channel 17, but you can look that up for yourself. So just one more wee thing for anybody that's maybe missed um, our earlier programs. I mentioned at the start, we're talking about post-millennial reconstruction. Now, why, dear brothers and sister, why is post-millennialism possibly not the right view to take? Can anybody give us an answer to that one? Or do we have any post-millennialists here? <laughs> okay, I'll put it this way. Um, post means after, millennial means a thousand years. So has Jesus reigned for the thousand years? Has Satan been locked up for this thousand years? Well, the truth of the matter, the, the, we are waiting for the day in which the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will take to be with him, take the, the heavenly company, the church, the assembly, the ecclesia, to be taken to be with him in glory. And we live in this last days of the church age. Once, of course, the tribulation will begin, and will come to an end after seven years, the Messiah will return and we will be coming with him. Our people, Israel as a nation, will accept the Messiah. They will look upon him whom they have pierced and they will mourn. They will realize that here is our beloved Mashiach that we have waited for so many years. He's finally came. He will restore the nation of Israel. Imagine. And Israel as a nation will be a blessing to the world, and the Lord will rule and reign from Yerushalayim for a thousand years. Israel restored. The world is blessed. And of course, Scripture teaches us in Revelation 21 and 22 that we will enter into the eternal order, that the time of eternity will sin, will be no more. So we, as believers in the Ecclesia days, in the church age, we are not waiting except for the coming of the Lord to take us to be with him in glory. It's wonderful. Oh, and then the moment that you start to rearrange everything and the new so-called apostles with another authority that they may have, that they claim to have, this is messing up all that which is given to us in the word of God. We need to stick to the ABC that is given to us by the apostles these early apostles that gave us the complete the, the complete New Testament writing in our own hands. Um, you know something, it's just it's just proof that these people don't know what the scriptures say. 
Uh, they don't know what Jesus himself has said in the Olivet Discourse, let alone all the prophecies through these 66 books of the Bible. Um, before I give Stuart the last word, and by the way, I'll, I'll, what I'm meaning by that is the Lord says things will get worse and worse. So they're trying to make things better and better. They're going against what has already been decreed by the Lord. Um, before, uh, Stuart, I'll come to you in a wee moment. Um, Anton, you have, um, I think you very kindly um, allowed us to have a couple of chapters from one of your books, um, on one on prophets, one on apostles. And we'll have these as PDFs. And if any of you want to find out more, then you can download these PDFs. If you go to our YouTube channel, uh, Global Vision TV, you can download them. So thank you for that, Anton. Stuart, would you like to just quickly say something to finish? So it's just really uh, continuing on from what Gideon just said there. He's just, he's just told us something that's absolutely fabulous. And <laughs> If we continued that, uh, he just touched on that passage from 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. It mm. says, encourage one another with these words. What words? Jesus is coming back for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And we are encouraging each other. Our blessed hope, there is much to rejoice in. Yes, it's getting worse and worse out there. But as we draw ever closer to Yeshua, our Jesus Christ, our Savior, we're going to make it, folks, on his strength as he leads us and he guides us. So, Amen. dear panel, it's time for you all to say goodbye to everybody. Say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, shalom, shalom. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> We'll see you next week. Um, you know, the next four weeks, we're going to be looking at four different types of spiritual deception. And I reckon we're going to be looking at the whole money movement next week. So until then, thank you again, dear panel. God bless. Bye-bye just now. Bye. Bye-bye. This is GV247.TV, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.TV, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>